Okay. So, thanks for coming to this talk about design contributions to open source software. Uh, the learnings from the Open Design Project, which was a project that I did during my time at Ushahidi. Uh, I won't be going into any depth about what Ushahidi does, uh, just essentially it's an open source, non-profit, uh, humanitarian tech company that I was the lead designer of uh, for two years. So a little bit about me before we launch into some of the project background. Uh, my name is Errol. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. If you're going to do any photos or refer to me, I'd please use my pronouns. I'm a humanitarian designer. I've been in the design and user experience space for about 10 years, uh, previously in corporate and commercial spaces. Uh, I have been, though, in the community development and humanitarian space for around about seven years in a voluntary capacity and two years in the open source uh, space. Um, so that's kind of my background and going into this project. So. As a person that was fairly new to open source, really, I came in as a designer with a set of preconceptions about how to approach the subject of design within any tool. Open source, to me, was another, another way of creating a software tool. And one of the things that became really quickly apparent to me as a designer in this space within open source, after I did some of the very quick learning about what open source is, how the community is built, and how it operates in a, in a very different way to potentially uh, the corporate world or the commercial world, is I was asking myself this question when I was going through our repos, looking for contributions or looking at contributions from coders. I was thinking, why aren't there many design-related contributions to are open source specifically, but then the wider question came up was, I wonder if equally in other open source projects, are there design contributions there? So I started to have conversations with, at the time we had two designers on staff at Shahidi, we were having lots of conversations about how this could be possible and what are the barriers for designers to contribute to open source software. We were designers employed working on open source software, but we still had this desire and this want to include the design community in somewhat the similar way that the development community is, but perhaps in a way that works best for designers. So we engaged with a agency. An agency came to us, actually, Ushahidi, as a humanitarian open source project and wanted to do some, some work with us. They were really keen to explore what humanitarian open source tech was. And with them, we started talking about this problem space of designers in open source, and they were really interested. It kind of sounded to them like sometimes the things that they organized around like called design jams or kind of designer hackathons in a, in a lot of ways. So they were like, well, how about we take some of the time that we were gonna support you with and, and create some events and do a design hackathon around your open source? And we thought, great. Let's, let's see what happens, let's see what works. So we did two different events with this organization and it's how we met Adobe uh, through these different events. We did one in Berlin and we did one in Seattle. And these are the basis of a lot of the learnings about going into the open design project that Ushahidi then got funding from Adobe to carry out. And the key thing that we learned from these first events that were unfunded, ones that we wanted to explore and wanted to try and find out some answers to, was that we essentially found out that designers, by and large, really want to work on projects for good, that have a purpose, that contribute back in some way to a community. And it just so happened that because Ushahidi was a humanitarian open source, the connection to for good was slightly easier for most designers to connect up with than your other kinds of open source projects. So we found this was a really good entryway into open source in general. So we formalized what we called the Open Design Project um, within Ushahidi. And this was, like I said, a collaboration between Adobe as a funding partner, Design It as our interested agency design community partnership uh, Part. And then Ushahidi as the owner of the open source tools, the owner of the open source projects that we were going to pilot these different 
interventions, these different methodologies, these different things that we were going to discover what we needed to create. So this project formally started as a funded project around summer last year, 2019. And the first part of the project was largely around discovering a lot of the challenges. And well, actually, one of the first things that we needed to do was define what we wanted to try and achieve. Like, what did we want to do other than what we'd previously done with the unfunded events, the, the design jams? And we really wanted to encapsulate what we'd already done, but take it a few steps further and kind of put it into this, this statement. So we talk about designers collaborating and contributing to humanitarian OSS at Tech for Good and Challenge Gatherings. This is how we presented it to the design community. But like I was saying, there were lots of challenges. And one of the first things that we needed to discover before we could improve on the previous events that we tried was start to understand some of these challenges. Now, each one of these challenges, and there were a lot, are full, <laughs> many, many hours of conversation, uh, talks and discussions long. But I'm just going to go through them quickly so that you have an understanding of the things that we investigated. So one of the first things is that most designers outside of the existing open source community don't really have a clue what open source is or can be. So if they have heard of open source, they might see it as the typical big players, Linux. Um, they don't even know that there is kind of such a thing as humanitarian or nonprofit open source or open source that contributes to good. It was something that was genuinely surprising to a lot of the designers we were engaging with. And most of these designers are ones completely outside of the current community that were coming in and wanting to participate in something for good. That was the, the draw. The next part kind of follows on is the open source software and all the things that are in, encompassed within that. It's not typically part of design education, although it is slowly becoming part of some institutions design education very recently, which is really encouraging to see. But by and large, my education uh, and many of my peers education did not include open source as a topic. If we used open source, they might have even never mentioned that they were open source or gone anywhere near digging into the subject in depth. And this follows on to another problem, which is around if you're not told and educated and brought into this community, then how can the business world, the working world, which most designers will tend to go into the corporate commercial world, how can they use open source knowledge, open source principles to help them uh, build their CV as well. If agencies and existing businesses that are a, like outside of an open source world and not technology focused, if they see on a designer CV, oh, open source, what's that? I mean, I'm not going to consider that as part of like my hiring process. It was like a real uh, chicken egg scenario around like what designers saw that they could use as valuable information for their further career. So they didn't feel like it was really part of their education. So if designers know open source, then one of the things that can be a huge barrier is the existence of things like GitHub or GitLab, and even just the superficial interface and how we use those systems to host and build and communicate our open source projects. Most of the designers that I work with on these projects, as soon as you sort of open up a GitHub issue, there's a sort of apprehension, a kind of sharp intake of breath about how to just get started with interacting. And you really often have to take them through the process of commenting on a GitHub issue, understanding what labels are, understanding where they can search, and all these kinds of different kind of basic level functions of things like GitHub. But it's really important to understand that that's the place that most designers are coming from when they want to contribute to something for good. So not only doing research into designers, we did a lot of research into existing open source communities and people that maintain open source. 
and speaking to a lot of people that either are currently maintaining open source or are looking to uh, or own their projects when you talk about them uh, when you talk to them about design they say things like ah oh, logos and graphics or ui and that really undersells the value of design as a, a many many splendid function that encompasses usability and user experience and service design. Lots of different things are of benefit from the design industry for open source. But it's not to downplay the use of jargon in the design community as well and how isolating that can be from the open source perspective as well. So there's a lot of work to be done on breaking down how we use our functional language within our profession and how inclusive or exclusive that can be. Um, around inclusivity as well, OSS project issues can be really restrictive in what, even if they know what kind of what they want to ask for as far as a design contribution, they can be incredibly restrictive. I had a lot of designers looking at issues and saying, well, they're just telling me what they want rather than asking me to explore a problem that they want solved using design. And similarly, or similarly, the, if you take a very open approach to, say, workshops with, with an open source project to designers, what you tend to get, and this is what we got in those first unfunded events, was uh, that they lose focus and they lose relevancy to real issues that need to be progressed within open source projects. So on the one hand, issues can be very restrictive and not inclusive for designers. But then when you say improve our product, they create things which are not able to be actually implemented. What we tend to call something like vaporware or design fiction within the industry. Fascinating solutions, but not nowhere near immediately implementable. And then there's the lack of version control in various different kinds of software that designers use. And also the lack of kind of a process for version control as well and a language around version control. And also something about how we approach the idea of collaboration and sharing within the design community. A lot of challenges. Whew. So I want to talk about what we, what we did, what we did with the project. So we investigated, we did all this research, we did a lot of interviews. We have an open repo uh, and with all of the information, all the research hosted on that repo. But I want to talk through the activities, the workshops that we, that we did and what we changed. So we did two uh, workshops, uh, two subsequent workshops after developing a very um, a testable but based off of the research that we created, a testable methodology, a testable workshop framework, and a way of constructing specific, a way of constructing issues in a much more um, design friendly, but also implementable into the OSS way. We did one of the workshops uh, in uh, Bangalore in India, which was as part of the Design Up Festival, which is a, a conference primarily for designers. And we focused there on one of Ushahidi's crisis tools. So Ushahidi makes a few tools that are to do with uh, crisis response and humanitarian aid. And we really focused in on the location that we were hosting this workshop. This is one of the key things that we discovered was really important. So we focused in on the Kerala flooding that happened in 2017 and 2018. Um, and we made sure that the challenges that we were bringing to that location and those designers were ones that were relevant and familiar to them so that they had a connection that that feeling of doing something for good was embedded within their community. Uh, we did our second one in tai Taipei and Taiwan and we focused in on typhoons and how it affected rural farmers and their livelihoods after those typhoons. To talk a little bit about what we brought to the workshops as far as activities that we did, we did a few different ones. We did something called empathy mapping, defining the problems, ideation, storyboarding, and then we went into live prototyping. And the idea was at the end of these workshops, which we tested two different uh, structures to the workshops, 
was that each challenge or issue would have a tangible contribution of some kind of design at the end of the workshop. So these workshops were about a day long, one of them in Bangalore that we tested a full day, so from a 9am to a 6pm, a full sort of exhausting day of designing. And in Taipei, what we tested was two halves with a remote sprint in between. So we did a four-hour workshop to introduce the project, introduce open source, and uh, the first exercise, which was empathy mapping. We did remote sprint activities, which were the subsequent activities here. And then we finished uh, with another four-hour workshop a week later with the sketching and prototyping in person. We wanted to see whether there was a difference in these two different structures to get better contributions or more sustainable contributions. So to go into two of the very key things as well, other than... Um, other than what I've covered already, on what makes a design-related workshop around your OSS really important, was one of them was inviting into the process a witness. So not only making that the issue of the open source relevant to that location that you're taking, um, taking that workshop to, so the designers within Taipei or the designers within Bangalore, but it was bringing in a witness that had had, had experienced the need of the software. So in, in the case of uh, the crisis communication uh, OSS tool that we were building for, we had uh, two witnesses. Uh, the Bangalore witness was a person that had done extensive research um, and aid delivered aid out into the Kerala flooding area. And she was our key witness to be able to give feedback to the designers and to bring them into the relevancy of what they were designing. How, how close was it to the designers? So um, how close was it to the user's need? So she was really there to um, test whether it was working, whether the solutions were working. And in Taipei, we had uh, one of the farmers that had been devastated by one of the, his farms had been devastated by the typhoons and a um, volunteer organiser that coordinated an effort to go in and relieve, that, relieve those farms of, of what they needed during the typhoons. So it's really key having essentially your users of your open source there with the designers so that they can experience who they're helping. The second one is the process of translating issues into design challenges. So there's an example here from the repo that we, that we worked on. Uh, and some of the things that you really need to go into depth on are who are the different users of this potential, potential issue? If you have an admin state versus a, a, another state, what are the problems that you're trying to solve? What are the ways in which you've maybe tried to solve it before? What's all the information from your team? Basically, as much information in that issue as possible. Though we did realize that there was a, a point in which there was too much information for designers and it became uh, restrictive in a different way. In, <laughs> rather than too little info, there was too much info. So we've met a happy medium now with this issue here. And to show you what came out of it was a series of different prototypes. So each of the workshops had multiple different teams and they self-selected their teams based on their skills that they wanted to bring to that team. We tried to evenly disperse different kinds of skills, or at least people that were willing to uh, perform different kinds of skills, so product management, uh, wireframing, sketching, lots of the different skills, so that the work was evenly shared across the team. And at the end, they produced a testable prototype, something that somebody could click through to go into the field and test with so that they could also show our witnesses what they'd completed. So to wrap up, the aims of the open design project going forward are still to increase and sustain contribution from designers to open source, to support the community, and that means both the design community and the open source community, to build the understanding between those two functions, to start to break down the jargon, start to break down the bridges that we may have constructed over the years of, of our operations, and bringing open design to education and workplaces to start making sure that OSS is valued within the design community and within our workplaces, as well as our educational institutions. 
Some of the things that you can help with if you're interested is we want to build more relationships with different OSS projects. So we don't want this to just be of benefit to Ushahidi um, and Ushahidi's tools. This framework, this methodology, all the different things that we've learned, we want it to be usable and relevant for any open source project. And you can find the resources here on the open design repo. Uh, so we've got five minutes and that's it. We got, oh, okay, five minutes left for questions? Or you, you flash five minutes. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. So I come from the education background. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think is challenging for people like me who are deep in the software side is I think in the design world there's that difficulty to sharing your work sometimes because of mm. how the industry is and mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's you know you feel like that, that's your that's that's your work that you're you're losing out. Uh, yeah. I just like what would be what do you think would be a better approach to being more inclusive or inviting designers into the mm. conversation in terms of like the language and some of the ways that we talk about, specifically mm -hmm. around education, I guess. Yeah, so um, the institution that's already has a module around open source is uh, Technical University, University in Darmstadt with their design students. It's really, I went to visit and it's really fascinating to see design students getting really, like having that educational basis. So I'm really hopeful that there'll be more institutions building in modules. Um, I think that this is partly a question about what we call design ego. Um, <laughs> there is such a thing. It's a very complicated topic, but there is not really, there's only recently the, the examples within corporate world of actively sharing either functions or, or being not just critiquing. Like there's a, there's a good history of designers critiquing each other, almost critiquing each other's work too much. Um, for the sake of critiquing, but um, yeah, there's, we're still building up these processes of opening up like how we did stuff. Like a lot of what design has struggled with was over the years is it's a validity as a job function. Like often design is regarded as <laughs> like a very enjoyable job because it's creative in a lot of ways when it's, it's a job like many others. It's a very, it's a very complicated um, topic, but I think what you can do is what I found works is having somebody that speaks a reasonable amount of design language that the designers can connect with that also speaks a reasonable amount of open source language so that um, with some of the workshops, we actually got developers coming along and learning design activities as well, which was really cool and fascinating. But yeah, having that balance of somebody that can kind of be a bridge um, allows them to flexibly bring in the, the two topics on an even platform. Cool. I don't want to take up more time because it's... Yeah, but it's, it's like we can still squeeze in a real oh. short time. Cool. Yeah. Uh, some of the design activities you showed recently mm -hmm. reminded me of some giant Oh, yeah, 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 uh, Agile. Yeah. Sure. So, so I guess one of the things that might be most interesting, oh, so the question um, was around Agile methodologies or things that are used in the Agile process and maybe bringing some of those into how we're working here or could they be brought in and would they be valuable? Um, so, as far as my knowledge goes, there are agile there are not specific design agile processes, but you can have something called a design sprint. And one of the one of the people that we worked um, closely with uh, was the Global Virtual Design Sprints, and they came out of Austin, Texas, and they now do a global virtual, like remote across the world design sprint. So they are really trying to push the idea of global remote for good design sprints which is super cool check check those folks out um, there are some things that i think we could benefit from retros for one thing it would be great to be able to build into this this um process the ability for 
the, OA, the open source project and the designers to do a retrospective on what was created. Um, also, building in um, structure around the sprints. So I structured the remote sprint around these activities, but there are, there are further sprints that I structured that, again, if we get further funding or if we carry on the project, then that's what I would like to test next. And then actually the next thing that I wanted to test um, at, after these activities was a sprint for the designers that was so fo focused solely around user testing and how to support um, open source design user testing processes. So that's all structured and kind of ready to go, just needs the, <laughs> needs the, either the funding or the support or, yeah, those kinds of things. That's awesome. I think you can take a slide. Thank you. <laughs>